him is that they make sure they keep him on the field so long drives today are good for the Ducks. Dan? Thank you, Todd. Oregon has won the toss. They have deferred. Kicking off the Beavers will get the ball. Deep for the Beavers. This is Gerard Lawson. Lawson out to the 25-yard line, and the Beavers will start with excellent field position at about the 32-yard line. Quarterback, as we've been talking about, Lyle Moivau. Kid that has turned into a great leader for Mike Riley and the Beavers. Plays with a lot of passion. This is his third start, but uh, last two games out. Victorious over Washington and Washington State. I think for both of these young quarterbacks, Dan, they just have to play within themselves. Not try to do too much. Mark the ball at the 33-yard line. Matt Severson is the tailback for Evanson Bernard. And it's a fake to Severson. Moifau to throw on first down. A lot of times got Wheat Brown over open over the middle, and Brown is knocked out of bounds. First down, Beavers in duck territory. Now here's today's starting lineup presented by the Olive Garden. And to introduce Oregon State starting offensive lineman, yep, that's the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from 1962, Terry Baker. The Beavers quarterback is someone D. Andros would love, Lyle Moivau. At running back is the pride of Bend, Oregon, Matt Severson. The receivers can all fly. Pendleton, Oregon's Roy Schooning anchors the O-line. And this is his 49th consecutive start. Big Kobe. hole up the middle for Severson. He can go. Severson at the 10. Touchdown, Oregon State. Second play of the game. 38 yards for number 37. How about that start to this game? Six foot two, 220 pound senior, Civil War. Bang. How about his second touchdown of the year? Here it goes. As soon as he gets here, this is what he sees. He says, look at this. I got a hole any way I want to go. And then he just explodes through it. And look at the speed from the big guy for his second touchdown of the season. Alexis Cerna for the extra point, and it is perfect. He is yet to miss in 80 attempts. Great start for the Beavers, obviously, and we've got two classy Mikes patrol on the sidelines today. Mike Bellotti is the winningest coach in Oregon history, has seven wins in 12 games against the Beavers. Mike Riley on the other side, well, he's coached Oregon State for six years and has built a nationally respected program in the heart of the Valley. He's three and three against the Ducks, and he's a happy dude right now. Severson up from your neck of the woods, up in Bend, Oregon. What a way to start the Civil War. Longest rush of his career started out playing defense for the Beavers. Filling in for Evanson Bernard. Two plays, 67 yard drive, just took 24 seconds off the clock. Bernard had his knee scoped, trimming up some cartilage, his right knee. They repaired a flap in there. It was causing irritation. Mike Riley told me before the game that it was a little bit swollen and that he wouldn't play. So Severson steps in. And what an answer to a problem. Oregon State has outscored their opponents 120 to 9 in the first quarter. 120 to 9. Reminds me of a 1972 Civil War game where the, one of the first plays was a trap and went the distance. Donnie Reynolds against the Beavers in Parker Stadium back in the day. Andy L. Brown is back deep for the Ducks. This ball will bounce on the ground, and this will be Patrick Chung. And it's a reverse to Derek Jones, and he's got room. Flag is down as Jones hits midfield. Jones now at the 40 and knocked out of bounds, but a flag is down back at the 23-yard line. Usually that means a block in the back, but there were so many people right there, it was hard to see if anybody blocking in the back or blocking in the front. It was a hole. Jack Foliart's our referee, graduate of the University of Oregon Law School, calling holding. Special teams coach Tom Osborne pulling out all the stops holding today. When during the return on the return team, number 35, 10-yard penalty. 
first down. You know, Tim, when you have a rivalry game, we've, we're seeing some fireworks right away. But when you have an offense that's struggling like Oregon's, you've got to try some trick plays everywhere. Yeah, Mike Bellotti called him the alumni plays. You know, he's going to bring him out. There's no reason not to in a game like this. Said he's even going to go for it on fourth down if he's got that opportunity later in this ball game. But Tom Osborne has to be upset. The play worked, and the hold brings it back. And redshirt freshman Cody Kemp from Beaverton's Westview High School will take a snap here. It's to Jonathan Stewart and Stewart's got a good gain over that right side. Well he led the Ducks in receiving yards in 1969 and then he led the team in rushing the next two seasons to introduce Oregon starting offensive lineups. That's Bobby Moore but he is now Ahmad Rashad. Beaverton Oregon's Cody Kemp makes his start at quarterback. Grew up in Beaverton, did the right thing, went to Eugene to go to school at Oregon. He'll rely on Jonathan Stewart to carry the load. He needs just 38 yards to be the single season record holder. I used to do that a long time ago. Now up front, the offensive line has given up only 22 sacks. They're led by Jeff Schwartz. Go Ducks. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. As Cody Kemp fires incomplete for Garrett Strong on second down and four. That's Dennis Dixon on the sidelines. Coach on the field. Holding penalty on the kickoff return. Reverse negated a 51 yard return. And has set up this third down and four. Here's Stewart right side. He's going to get the first down. Dragging tacklers. Alan Darling gets a free ride. Now he was 3 0 in his Oregon State career in Civil War games. Introduced the Beavers starting defensive lineups. Here's their quarterback from 60 to 62, Terry Baker. Penetration is what Tommy Prothro preached, and the D line does just that, especially with Dorian Smith back in the starting lineup. The linebackers are as good as Amy, Darlin, Doggett, and LaRock. Al Afalava is OSU's hardest hitter. Go get him, Beavs. Thank you, Butch, as uh, Jonathan Stewart struggling for nine yards close to a first down, and they say he's 85%. Tim, I think he looks a little closer to 100% these last three runs. Yeah, there's no question. Emotion is now playing a role, and that adrenaline flow, I'm sure, is taking some of the pain away out of his toe. If you look at him, he cuts back, and then the best part of this play is at the end. Look at the yards after contact, and look at the way he continues to stay on his feet. Twist and turn and fight for extra yards. Only 33 yards last week against UCLA. Looks much better in this game, but again, that's emotion, that's adrenaline because of the Civil War. And the Beavers were twisting on his left foot. It's the right foot that he has problems with, the turf toe on his right foot. Second down and one. Stewart's got another first down as he dances out to the 45 46 yard line. Ball came loose. Oregon down on top of it, but they're saying he was down by contact and there is no fumble. Tired of being skinny and scrawny? There are thousands of products. To Football. Cerna with a short punt. Barely across the 30 yard line. Thirty-yard punt by Alexis Cerna. So, Tim, the the Ducks have had great field position in this game. Beaver struck first and fast. And, and this is one of those situations where I think that now Cody Kemp has to get comfortable. He's got to feel confident with the guys around him. He's got to take advantage of this field position. Oregon needs points, and they need that success to help him build confidence. Right now he's 0 for 3. And one completion reversed by the replay booth, which was an excellent call. Here's Stewart right side. And Stewart gets to the 30 yard line and then is bounced out of bounds. Derek Doggett. There's the fake to Stewart. Kemp in trouble. Now he'll run and he'll get blasted. Alan Darling with the big hit. Welcome to the Civil War, youngster. Oh, he felt every bit of that. Look at him. He's he's 
I think it, it's still vibrating through his toes. Play action. Now this is Dixon like, but now he tucks it away, feels the pressure, and doesn't wait in the pocket. He's lucky he didn't fumble that ball the way he was hit. And I'm sure that Dennis Dixon will tell him along the sidelines, you can't be taking that type of hit. You know, Unger, Max Unger was saying take a timeout because he's not right. Kemp is not right. He took a couple of big shots last week. In fact, was knocked out of the game by Bruce Davis in the UCLA game. They'll check on Cody Kemp. This is Justin Roper, just in case. Oregon needed a win in Corvallis to get to the Rose Bowl. Now, we trailed late in the fourth quarter when quarterback Danny O'Neill in his last regular season game threw the game-winning touchdown. We were smelling roses for the first time since 1958. And quarterback for Oregon is number 11. Justin Roper was 2 of 6 last week against the Bruins for 18 yards and an interception. And he faces a third down and 7. He's fired, got a wide open receiver. Touchdown, Oregon. Jeffrey Mayo. Thirty one yard strike from Justin Roper, a red shirt freshman from. Buford, Georgia, to Jeffrey Mail, a true freshman from Paradise. Matt Evenson ties the ball game. Come knock on my door, Mr. Roper. Beaver seven, Duck seven. It's the Civil War. First touchdown pass of his young career, Justin Roper. 31 yard strike to Jeffrey Mail has tied this 111th edition of the Civil War. How about going to the bullpen like that and bringing out Roper, who's six foot six and can see the field a little bit better than can Kemp, and just threw a strike for that touchdown. Yeah, who plays quarterback for Oregon next time they get the ball? It appears that uh, Cody Kemp is okay on the sidelines as Evenson kicks it deep. Bernard Lawson at the 12 yard line, reversing his field. Got room to the left side. Across the 30 yard line, still going. Good return by Gerard Lawson. Beaver ball, first and 10. Quick pass out here to Brandon Powers, and Powers knocked off his feet. After a short game. And Mike Riley and the Beavers are going to call their first timeout of the first half. 3.15 to go, first quarter. All tied in Eugene. Back in Eugene, where our score is 7 7. He was just called their first time out. Kyle Moivau, three of four for 57 yards. He's facing a second down and eight now from the 36 yard line of Oregon State. Clinton Polk is the tailback. He's got it right up the middle. And he's across the 40 yard line. It's ice and rain. Good game for Clinton Polk. Todd Harris. Well, Dan, just to update you on Cody Kemp. I talked with head athletic trainer Kevin Style moments ago. He, the doctor, Dennis Dixon, everyone, the first thing they said to Cody was, don't hit the middle linebacker with your head. Get down. They're going to hold him out. They said he was a little bit fuzzy. So good news for Jack Tripper. Mr. Roper will be back for the next series. Thank you, Todd. That's, that's good advice. You never want to hit the middle linebacker. You never want to get hit by him either. Third and three for the Beavs. Moy vow to throw. 
He's got a completion to catchings out to midfield. First down, Oregon State. You know, you talk about quarterbacks taking on the linebacker or taking on the defensive back. We've seen both guys do it, and neither one has won. Boy, Val fumbled when he rolled his shoulder and tried to take on the safety. And then Kemp, he's still out of the ball game because he tried to take on a linebacker. It just doesn't make sense. You're more valuable, your team, just to get down and continue to play. Yeah, neither of these kids have to prove their toughness. Need to stay in the lineup. Polk, the tailback. Rodgers in motion. And Rodgers will get it on the reverse. And Oregon's waiting for him. And knock him out of bounds for a couple yard loss. Kwame Ajiman from his middle linebacker spot. Of course, James Rogers, number eight. We're going to see him a lot today. He averages 12 yards a run. They want to get the ball to him as much as possible, as many ways as possible. So here they bring him around on the reverse. He's also an excellent receiver. Watch the end of this play, though. He really gets tattooed on the sideline and sitting back there by the trunk by the time he ends up. Talking to defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti about Rodgers. He says he's a lot like that other guy named Rodgers from about 40 years ago, Johnny Rodgers. Very fast. He lost three on that first down play. Rodgers in motion again, fake to Rodgers. Moiga hit as he throws, and it's almost caught. What a throw by Moival. We have a flag down. Yeah, this is going to be unsportsmanlike. Nick Reed putting the pressure on Lyle Moival. Boy, Mike Riley is furious. He's down in midfield. Now he's calling his team over, but he was given the, the linesman what for down there. And that's when he threw the flag. Had a great conversation with Mike this morning. You know, he's just an even, even keeled guy, never gets too high, too low. Just an outstanding coach. The players love him. Personal foul call against the Oregon Ducks. After the play, personal foul on the defense, number 34. Blow to the head. 15 yards, automatic, first down. And that's the unsportsman like they got Mike Riley so fired up, and he kind of lobbied for that penalty. This is actually away from the ball. The ball was thrown down by the 35. The penalty took place up near midfield in front of the bench. And here's the hit on Moy Val. So they continue to get him and take him to the ground. Here's the incompletion. And then the top left of your screen, you see those feet. That's where the, the blow to the head took place. Brandon Powers. Slapping his hands together, saying he let one get away. Great throw by Moyval under pressure. And he'll throw again. And he's got a wide open tight end. Gabe Miller. Gabe Miller takes it all the way down inside the 10 yard line. Wide open for 30 yards. They let him off the line free, too. They didn't even chip at him, just let him release. Here he is to the left of your screen. And now he just kind of finds his way down the seam, and the ball's waiting for him. Harper was late getting over. Here's that penalty. Now watch the shot to the head right here. And it took place right in front of Coach Riley. So it's first and goal for the Beavers at the eight-yard line. Rodgers in motion. Fake to Polk. Here's Rodgers open at the five. Rodgers down to the one. And they'll mark it just shy of the goal line. Ajman and Harper on the tackle. Boy, he was wide open. Had Malval led him, Boy Val would have hit him while he was still in stride. It would have been a touchdown, but he threw underneath and he made him stop and come back into the pursuit. And you're really seeing the effects of the bye week for Oregon State. Their, their offense is really clicking. Great timing, very imaginative play calls. And this is a team that's been on a roll. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Andy Stewart is the fullback. Clinton Polk the tailback. Second and goal from the one. Polk left side and Polk is in the end zone touchdown Oregon State it's one of those deals I didn't think he was going to get in it's almost as if the tackler threw him into the end zone watch the end of this play because he was stopped at the one he's hit there and now watch they throw him into the end zone while they're tackling him great leg drive by Polk pulling Kevin Garrett into that end zone Tim Zerna, Zerna the Groza winner back in 05 with an extra point. It was perfect. Six foot two, 215 pound senior from Phoenix, Arizona, Clinton Polk with his third touchdown of the season. 
gives the Beavers a seven point lead as we come to the end of the first quarter. Carry compensation you deserve. Third and 15 for Roper. And that ball is intercepted off the hands of Dixon. This is Doggett. Doggett inside the five. Doggett to the end zone. Touchdown, Beavers. Take another look at this. Doggett's fourth interception of the year. He's an active linebacker. Again, he's reading the eyes of the quarterback. And Roper leads him right there. Then the tip drill. Oh, my. Just picks it off, shows his ability to take it down the sidelines. Big, strong guy at 6'3", 210. Not even involved in the breakup itself. Just in the deflection, the tip drill, and the touchdown. Ed Dixon. Another drop pass, dropped two last week against UCLA. This one cost the Ducks seven points as Cerna adds the PAT. Derek Doggett, eighth career interception, the senior from San Diego's University High School, the former safety, taking it to the Hacienda. And give a lot of credit to Afalava. Afalava jumps the route, tips it, and there's Doggett to get the tip. I asked him what he likes about playing linebacker when we talked to him this week. He said succinctly, hitting, loves to hit. Well, he'll love that pick, too. And Dixon went right to work on Roper, telling him what he did and what he didn't do. Tell him to look off the receiver. Tell him don't throw into coverage like that, especially when a guy's jumping your route. But the ball hit the receiver right in the hands. I thought that was a pretty good say ball he, by Roper. Saying he needs a little help. <laughs> I'd say, keep doing what you're doing. Keep hitting him in the hands. They're going to catch him. Sooner or later. Boy, that has been a problem, though, with Oregon. It's been a situation where they've been tipping the balls. They aren't catching the balls, specifically Jason Williams. But they had nine drop balls last week against UCLA. Jason Williams did not start today, and yet we've yet to see him in the lineup. They need his production along with Ed Dixon, especially when you consider Pacinger and Colvin are out with injuries. Walter Thurman with the return out to about the 26 yard line. Just underway here in the second quarter. A countdown at seven on ESPN. 609 to go, first half. Ball on the 17 yard line. Powers in motion. Moyval rolling. Throwing to Powers, and he's got this one. He's out close to a first down. Jerome Boyd on the stop. Todd Harris, I know you have a special story for us. Well, Dan, you talk about this civil war and how it separates families here in the great state of Oregon. Well, here's two that were brought together. That is Tech Sergeant Darren G. from Portland, First Lieutenant Brandon Hill, also of Oregon, and they're over in Iraq. We want to send out our best to them watching on Armed Forces Networks displaying the beavers and the ducks flag on that burned out take protecting our rights there in Baghdad and where it is about 2 a.m. Sunday morning in Baghdad. Thanks gentlemen. God bless him. You betcha. Thank you Todd. Second down and one for Severson and Severson cannot pick up the first down. It's great this game is being carried around the world by American Forces Network. I've got a good friend in Casablanca Morocco. He's a beaver, too. In fact, he was my best man, and I was his best man, Steve Johnson. And we certainly appreciate everything those guys do. Wow. A couple best men there, too. And I know Tragic is happy about this score. 14-point lead for the Beavers. And they've got a third down and one from the 26. Severson. And he's not going to get it. Great penetration by the Ducks. Alexis Cerna comes on to punt the ball to Jarris Bird. Cerna 
struggling with the punting chores 30 yards on his first one 35 on his second. This one does not turn over hits the ground but gets a great roll all the way down to the 32 yard line. Jarris Bird let that one roll and that might have been a mistake. 42 yards on that punt. Time now for this week's Aflac trivia question. I know Beaver fans will know this one. Who's the only player to win the Heisman Trophy and play in the Final Four? That's a great question. And you're right. That's a layup for half the state. I was going to say, you're right about the <laughs> folks here knowing the answer to that, but it's still a great question. Absolutely. I'm taking it back east. I'm going to win some money on that one. You bet. Only player to win the Heisman and play in the Final Four in basketball. Stewart will get a couple. Oregon has all three of their timeouts as indicated by the yellow lines under the name Oregon. DeAndros the great pumpkin the coach of the Beavers for 11 years. That says it all right there. Second and eight for Roper time to throw over the middle and he's got a completion and a big hit Al Afalaba knocking Jeffrey Mail down but Mail gets back up first down Oregon and a flag is down could be a blow to the head by Al Afalaba Afalaba put his hands up and said hey what did I do I was coming hard at the ball and trying to go high he'll tell you right Personal here foul number nine on the defense helmet to helmet contact 15 yards added it into the catch first down Here it is. Afalaba comes hard, has him lined up, Whew. goes shoulder first, and knocks him loose. How did Mail hang on to this ball? I don't know, but that that is some vicious hit. And there's the hat to hat. Typical defensive outlook. That's a great catch. It was a great <laughs> hit, too. And just what the Ducks needed to get the extra 15 yards moves the ball all the way to the Beaver 38 yard line. Here's a backwards pass to Ed Dixon and now he's going to run it. Dixon has a 30 the tight end looking to throw the ball the Beavers covered it down the field but Dixon heads up picks up another first down for Oregon. Yeah you could say that again Ed Dixon with a great decision there to tuck it and go. I mean it was great coverage downfield. And he reads this thing. It's a pass from the get go. Here comes Dixon. Dixon looks downfield. There's coverage, and he doesn't waste any time, doesn't hesitate, makes a great decision, goes after the first down markers. Ball now at the 28 yard line of Oregon State. Here's Stewart. Big hole, right side. Stewart inside the 15, down to the 11 yard line. Derek Doggett and Jeff Van Orso stop him there, but that was a good run. First one in a long time for Jonathan Stewart. Yeah, so Dixon makes a good decision, gets a first, then all of a sudden Stewart looks like he's got his old feet back and he's starting to make some good cuts and go strong. They get a and then they jump. Somebody jumped and then everybody's pointing at everybody. Stewart got 17 yards on that run play. This should be on the defense. They got into the neutral zone. But were they induced? That's what they're talking about right there in that huddle. This is where everybody lobbies and waits to see what the call is. Defensive coordinator Mark snap, Banker. False start. Number 66 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Inducement, boys. Pat Sawalo. I thought it was. Uh, when we talked to Mark Banker, I loved his comment about tackling Jonathan Stewart. What did he say? Got to bring your big boy pads. <laughs> <laughs> I go bear hunting with a stick. Don't be afraid, boys. Bring the big boy pads. That'll back the Ducks up five yards. First down and 15 now. And there's Stewart again on that right side. Bounces off as one tackler and is taken out of bounds by Doggett. And that one tackler was LaRock, and he's a good tackler. But he didn't have his feet under him, so he couldn't use that. It was a one arm, and Stewart will break that every time. Here it is. Now watch 42. LaRock comes hard. Then he reaches out with that left hand, but he doesn't have his feet under him. 
Great job by Stewart to bounce outside and pick up the extra yardage. Jordan Holmes doing a good job blocking on LaRock as Stewart went by. There's Stewart again, same side. Inside the 10 now. Down to about the eight yard line, down to the seven yard line. Todd? Dan, you talk about Jonathan Stewart, just how strong he is. Well, he is the strongest duck this year, and he would have been the strongest duck a couple of years ago had it not been for Haloti Nata now with the Baltimore Ravens. Stewart posts a power clean lift of, get this, 402 pounds, just five pounds left than Nata. Stewart also benches a Brant like 410. Best ever for any Oregon running back, and he's using it all now. Yeah, baby. That's Brant style. Third down and seven for Oregon as Stewart goes in motion. Roper with a throwback screen. Malachi Lewis. A little slow getting underway after that reception is tackled by Doggett short of the first down. But this is what Mike Pilate was telling us yesterday. If he has a fourth down opportunity, he's going to go for it. So this is the Civil War. And if we're down in the red zone, we're going for it. Even at midfield, if it's fourth, if the, if the timing is right, we're going for it. And I think right here, he's going for it. What a great play by Doggett. Oregon, 5 of 11 this season, converting fourth downs. This one is critical. This is a civil war. Fourth and two from the four-yard line. Roper to the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Garen Strong. The defense was looking for Stewart. They didn't respect the running of Roper. But Roper throws a strike to Strong. Watch the separation. In, out. The ball is high right where his guy can go get it. Perfectly thrown. Well done. Just the second touchdown catch of the senior's career, the senior from San Jose. Garen Strong with a great catch. Here's Roper, puts it down for Evenson, and Evenson puts it through. 66 yard drive, eight plays. Took two minutes, 56 seconds. Three yard touchdown reception on senior day for Garen Strong. The drive aided by the personal foul penalty on Al Afalaba. On Jeffrey Mail. Todd, I know that uh, Garen has really had a tough time lately. Well, Dan, no question. You really you got to cheer for a guy like this. Following the loss at UCLA, the Oregon Ducks flew back to Eugene. And on that flight, Garen Strong found out that his brother, younger brother Tyler, passed away after a four-year battle with cancer. Now, he said he's going to play in this game to honor his brother. His family's here. They have to go back to San Jose, though, to have that funeral services. But he said tonight he is playing for his brother's memory. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the entire Strong family. But congratulations to him. That's got to lighten the burden just a bit. Thank you, Todd. Shows you just how much this sport of football and this game, the Civil War, means to these young men and their families. And for him to dedicate this game to his brother, boy, what a great, great route he just ran. A touchdown he scored for his brother. And really has brought Oregon back into the ballgame. Back deep for this Evenson kickoff. Here's Gerard Lawson. And he gets across the 25 yard line. Beavers have one timeout. One minute and six seconds to go. By Moival would lead the Beavers out from the 25 yard line. Just one timeout to work and a long way to go. Oregon has three, though. If they can get a stop or a negative play, they may start using some timeouts down here. Here's a quarterback draw, and there's your stop, and there's your fumble. And Oregon's got it on the fly. At the 20, the 15, Jarris Bird scores. Touchdown, Ducks. Nick Aliotti told his defense, I want three turnovers and two scores. There's the turnover. Here's the scoop and score. And the Ducks are back in this thing. 
Terrific play by the defense. They were going to try to use their timeouts and try to get points on the board in this last minute, and they got it without using any TOs. Give David Faatete, the senior from Medford, Oregon, North High School, ripped that ball loose as Oregon is called timeout. And Jarris Bird with the scoop and score, Tim. Both teams today have scored defensive touchdowns. Doggett with the 28 yard interception return. There's Nick Aliotti, defensive coordinator, set those goals. He knows that Jarris Bird is the guy that makes things happen. Of course, Gil Bird put those jeans in him and five interceptions. Got a couple sacks. Now he's got a touchdown here on the scoop and score on the fumble return for 33 yards. 33 yard fumble return by Jarris Bird. I played with his daddy, Gil Bird, in San Diego. Outstanding player, outstanding man, his son, just like him. Boy, how things have changed. 54 seconds to go, first half, and Evenson ties the ball game. Just moments ago, Oregon State had a comfortable 14 point lead, but Oregon in 12 seconds has scored twice to tie this one up. And this whole stadium's rocking. It was real quiet here a couple minutes ago because of the play of the Beavers. Now you go back to Doggett's interception return for a touchdown. He did the same thing last year in Research Stadium against Brady Leaf and the Ducks. Anything can happen in a rivalry game. It usually does. Mike Riley told us his first real distinct memory of the Civil War. His dad was coaching. It was at Hayward Field. And what he remembers is a great Thurman Bell interception. Hayward Field, of course, track only since 1967, but he's he's been a part of this and remembers this. And Civil War's been a part of his life for a long, long time. I think right now he just wants to get to the clubhouse. It'll be interesting to see what they do after they get the ball back after the Evenson kickoff. Lawson and Rogers are deep for the Beavers. There's a line drive kickoff by Evenson, pushing Lawson back to the goal line. He's out to the 20th. And hit at the 30 yard line and pushed back right there. Oregon only had 10 guys on the. Well, earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question, who's the only player to win the Heisman Trophy and play in the Final Four? The answer is absolutely Terry Baker. The Heisman Trophy in 62, the first Heisman Trophy winner from the West Coast. He played in the Final Four for the Beavers. Sweet left-hander. Boy, would he fit in quite nicely in today's game. The spread offenses, the way he could run and pass. Moifau under center. Here's Polk. And Polk gets tackled as he crosses the 30 yard line. Oregon. Glenn Polk picks up a yard. Todd, things have certainly changed. <laughs> Well, Dan, you've played in your fair share of big games here at Autzen Stadium, but I cannot tell you how the flow has changed so much. It has not been this noisy since they introduced Dennis Dixon in pregame warm-ups. The fans are back into it. Everyone now that is wearing green and gold is standing as opposed to about five minutes ago when everyone was sitting. The Beaver fans have now taken that position. Thank you, Todd. And the Beavers are content, and I think Oregon is too, to take this tie ball game to the house. Yeah, Mike Riley's telling him just... Let the time go down. See ya. Let's get in the clubhouse. And this stadium will erupt. Strike up the band. The 111th meeting of these two great schools is all tied after one half of football. Todd Harris is with Mike Riley. Todd? 
Well, tied at 21, Coach, you're still smiling. How do you stop the flow and the momentum that shifted over to the Ducks? Well, we just got to come back out and play the game. You know, we, we have, uh, you know, given them some plays, you know, with the, with the turnovers that, uh, and, and then they made a good fourth down play down there. So it's just going to be a good, hard-nosed football game in the second half. We just got to turn it back on. You have a young, enthusiastic quarterback. What do you tell him about when he scrambles now? Put the ball away. Take care of the football. That you know, that's been our deal. So if we do that, we're going to be all right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Todd. The Beavers now have lost 11 fumbles on the year, Tim. Well, costly ones today. Sure, that's exactly right, and that's what Mike's talking about. If they protect the football, they still lead in this ball game. And he's telling his guys, "Hey, look, we've just got to continue to do what we're doing, and we can win it." Well, Tim Oregon will get the ball to start the second half. We're tied in Eugene, 21 all. seconds the Ducks came back yeah it's one of those situations where Oregon State has three turnovers but they've outrun them and they've doubled their passing yardage here's the situation here comes Matthew Silverton. Silverson now takes that thing 38 yards for the touchdown right up the middle and right now it was all Oregon State but Jeffrey Mayo catches his pass for rope for 31 yard touchdown we're tied at seven second quarter Derek Dogger 20 yard interception return for a touchdown and everything started to go toward the Beavers until this Late in the second half, Darius Bird picks up the fumble, 33 yards. We are tied at 21, and that's where the game stands. So the three turnovers by Oregon State have hurt them, even though they've outrun them, and they've doubled their passing yards. Well, and in any big rivalry game, the big hits, and we've had our share. Well, these guys definitely know the difference between come here and sick of quarterbacks have been taking licks the entire game. And then how about on special team? You think these guys don't come with bad intentions? <laughs> yes, sir. That's a rivalry game. Civil War. Oregon, Oregon State. That's great stuff. And one of those big hits was on starting quarterback Cody Kemp of Oregon. Knocked him out of the game. Here's the kickoff to start the second half. Walter Thurman has got it. And Thurman across the 35-yard line, out close to the 40-yard line. So Justin Roper, the quarterback for the Ducks, will have good field position to start the second half. Let's go back to the really the key play in the first half, Tim. This pass to Reese ruled incomplete. Yeah, and the rule book says not only does he make the catch when the left foot comes down, but when he hits the ground, he still has to have complete control of that football. I thought he had control. He was holding the football. His knee touched down. He still had control, but when he lost, lost it when he hit the ground. I talked to Fred Gallagher, the replay official at halftime. He says you have to prove you can control the ball through the whole process. That's why it was not a touchdown. And then Alexis Cerna misses a 33-yard field goal. Here's Jonathan Stewart with a huge hole up the middle across the 40 yard line. Jonathan Stewart, 21 yards. Todd Harris. Well, Dan, I talked with Coach Mike Bellani just moments ago, and he did unveil the news that Cody Kemp is done for the day with a concussion. So Justin Roper will have to go the whole way. I said, Who's your backup quarterback? Well, it's a converted rover, Marvin Johnson. Now, he did play at Dominguez High School in Compton, California as a quarterback, so he has experience. But they also told me that Jonathan Stewart in a lot of pain. There's nothing they can do for that turf toe. They said they'll give him some anti-inflammatories. They said he does not like tape on his foot, so he is just going to go the difference, dif distance with that steel shank that's trying to protect that turf toe. Dan? Thank you, Todd. He may be in pain, but he is administering pain right now with those first two carries. 22 carries, 121 yards for the man in pain. And here he is again. And the Beavers gang up on him in the backfield. Bad exchange that time with Roper. And again, Stewart's slow to get up. I mean, he is just playing with heart today. You know how badly that toe's got to hurt. Yeah, in last year's game, Tim, against the Beavers in Corvallis, really when Jonathan Stewart came of age in my mind, put the team on his back in that second half and really got twisted back there almost hurt his knee on that play but really outstanding job last year in the Civil War for Stewart here's Roper and that ball again almost intercepted and again it was Doggett who almost stepped in front of that one got to believe it was an emotional locker room for Oregon they came in there Mike Pilati had to be fired up you know Nick Aliotti was fired up and Dennis Dixon yelling and screaming in that locker room they ended that first half so strongly with those touchdowns in less than 20 seconds. 
to tie this ball game. Yeah, Bilotti told you he's going to go for it on fourth down today. Here it is, fourth and six. They converted a touchdown last time on fourth down. Big hit on Roper. Ball is incomplete. Getting in on Roper was Dorian Smith. That ball could have been picked off, but the Beavers will get the ball with good field position at the 36 yard line. Well, Smith came hard, Dorian Smith. He was going after his seventh sack of the knee or the year. He's heck playing with a bad knee, but this ball, it's good play by Bellotti, though, to go for it right there. You're down in four down distance. It doesn't hurt you badly. You only give the ball up at the 36 if you don't get the first. The problem is that Roper took a pretty good hit, and if you're down your last quarterback, you don't want him taking hits like that from Smith. It would have been a real long field goal, about 54 yards for Evenson. The first carry of the second half is by Severson and Nick Reed jumps on him. Severson's first carry today was that own touchdown run 31 yards. Severson is now over 100 yards rushing. First carry of the day he went 38 yards right up the middle for a touchdown. I think the bye week really helped him, allowed the Beavers to fine tune and define their offense and put in a few new wrinkles. You mentioned that in the first half, and I don't think there's any question it's really helped him. Second and seven. Rodgers in motion. Fake to Rodgers. Severson is hitting the backfield. Another tackle for a loss for this Oregon defense. Bami Ajiman first there, number 30. Fairly conservative play for the Beavers. And I don't think Rodgers is getting as many touches as OSU would like. They want him to get involved. And Mike Riley told us they want Rodgers to touch the ball because he's at threat every single time he's involved in a play to go the distance. He runs at 10, 300 meters. That's fast. From the shotgun, Moivau. Blitz by Oregon. Time to throw. Completed pass over the middle to his big tight end. That's Howard Kroom, first down Oregon State. Howard Kroom gives him that big target, 6'3, 241 pounds. He's out of Long Beach, California. Very quiet in the first half. Maybe they'll start looking to the tight end and go out that way and then start going out to the wideouts. Oregon State's offensive line doing a great job protecting young Lyle Moivo. No sacks in that first half and time to throw on that third down. Balls out at midfield. Here's Rodgers. And Rodgers got running room. Thurman trips him up across the 45 yard line but a good gain on first down. Take a look at the first half statistics of the 111th Civil War and you look at right down here to the turnovers and you say all right well this has been a factor. Then you look at the points off turnovers that's pretty even. Third down conversion, ne neither team has really done well. But if you look up here, it's been pretty much dominated by OSU. Rodgers got eight on the reverse. They call it the fly sweep. Clinton Polk, the tailback for Severson on second and two. And Polk is hit in the backfield. And will struggle just to get back to the line of scrimmage again. Nick Reed leading Sacker in the Pac-10 with a tackle there. You know, it was funny talking to Mike Riley earlier in the week. He said the same thing that he told Todd at halftime. We've got to take care of the ball. And we've got to be able to run the football. And they haven't done that so far. But they're still tied at 21. And pretty much have dominated this ball game other than those turnovers. Third and two, Clinton Polk, the tailback. Powers in motion. Fake to Polk. Moivau with a wide open tight end again. Crooms got it, and he's got another first down for the Aggies. Take a look at your tight end on the right side here, and he just kind of releases, gets that little fake block, then gets back out in the flat, and there he is wide open. Nobody chipped him. Nobody let 
He just got off the line of scrimmage free, and they can do that all day. Well, if you're running the ball as well as the Beavers are, a play action pass is just going to be super effective as it was on that play. Yeah, and a tight end should never get off the line of scrimmage freely. You got to you got to at least chip him. Play clock running down. Boy, a lot of time surveying the field. Now he throws the ball away. Was not out of the tackle box. Was hit by Jeremy Gibbs and Nick Reed. Incomplete pass. Crowd wanted a flag. Did not see a receiver in the area. Tackle box, tackle box, tackle box. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, he may have drifted far enough. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, Jack Foliard right on top of things. Saw the drift out of the tackle box and the legal throwaway because it went past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's a good no call. Second and ten for the Beavs. Quick pass out here, incomplete. Catchings could not make the catch. That is a tough catch for anyone running away from the quarterback ball just out in front a little bit too much. You know what Mike Riley told me about Boyval this morning? No. He said not only is he a tough kid, not only is he a great athlete, but the guy can dance. <laughs> oh, seriously. You know, he's saying that Hawaiian thing, and he does he does all the traditional dances, entertains the whole team, keeps them loose all the time. Uh, he is really turning into a passionate leader for this Beaver offense. Just what they needed after Canfield goes down. He's a character. Severson's a tailback on third and ten now. Oregon blitzes from the corner. Severson's got it. And he's out of bounds just short of the first down by about three yards. Patrick Chung with a good tackle on the sideline. That pass went right to the area that was vacated by the blitzing Jarris Bird. Oregon State got away from this in the first half and they got a little bit conservative near the end of the half but they're starting to open this thing back up they go to the tight end then they take Severson they swing him they tried to get the ball to Rodgers then they threw the little flanker screen so they're starting to mix things up they're starting to get back in the flow of the game but they too now are faced with that critical fourth down fourth and two the Beavs have been real good on fourth downs this year nine of 14 converting the difficult situation play clock running down play clock runs out flag is thrown so again the inexperience perhaps Tim of young boy long game offense five yard penalty fourth down now yeah, that, that, what's that the decision should, that should definitely not happen boy staying on the field they still feel like they're down in four down territory but obviously now the play call has to change because now it's a load now the field goal here would be just about 50 51 yards and Alexis Cerna has a great leg a career long of 58 he's hit a 52 yarder this year but it's cold and damp here in Eugene they're going to take a timeout and talk about it 9 29 to go third quarter crucial talk on the sideline coming up what's up dude what's on your phone let's watch ESP Welcome back to Eugene. We're all tied at 21. That is Alexis Cerna. They have brought him on for the Oregon State Beavers. I had a chance to talk to him during halftime, and I said, Alexis, if it comes down to it, what are you comfortable with in these conditions? He said, 50 and under, no problem, Dan. Now he's about six inches longer than 50 right here, Todd. The wind, whatever little bit there is, is at his back. Kavanaugh will put it down. It's on the way. It is short. No good. Never really got good contact with the ball. That wouldn't have been good from 40 yards. That was short and left. It was almost as if he stubbed it. Well, last year he hit a 40-yarder to win the Civil War for the Beavers, but you're right, Tim. This did not look good from the get-go. No, I, his plant foot was solid, but he hit it fat. 
Here it is. Now watch his left plant foot is fine, but he hits it fat and low on the ball. His foot actually hit the ground before it hit the football, just like a duff in, in golf, and it came up way short. Why did you look at me when you said duff, duff in golf? <laughs> Oregon with the, the ball out all the way out to midfield here. That's Jonathan Stewart with another big run on first down. Well, Jonathan Stewart's got to get so much credit today now as the rain starts to come down. They're calling for sleet, a little bit of snow. But Jonathan Stewart is about 90%. He's got a turf toe. And he's out here battling and cutting and hitting and running and just doing a great job because all the Ducks said they didn't think they could play and they couldn't win without Jonathan Stewart. So he's gotten it out today. He's playing and he's not once winced. Well, he might have winced, but he didn't stop playing. And I know number 11, Justin Roper, is happy to see Jonathan Stewart carry and be effective as he is again on this play. What a gutty performance. I got a chance to work with Eric Dickerson on Monday Night Football, and he told us that the most painful injury a running back can possibly have is not a knee, it's not an ankle, not a shoulder, it's the turf toe, because every time you put your foot on the ground, it feels like a knife is going right through the bottom of your foot. What great balance that time. Dorian Smith with penetration on Stewart almost took him down for a big loss. You know, and, and Chris Pfeiffer, our producer, he uh, was working with ED. And, and ED told him, Dickerson told him, he actually had to cut his shoe. He had to make it like a convertible shoe, take all the pressure off that toe that he possibly could because you couldn't even touch it without really excruciating pain. Good penetration, good strength, gets him right around the foot. The balance to stay up, but just that little stumble allowed the pursuit to get there. This will be a third down and six now from the 48-yard line for Roper. And he's got a wide open receiver. It's Mail. Mail's got it at the 20. Inside the 20, out of bounds. First down, Oregon. Mail was a defensive back. But they had so many injuries and so many guys down that they moved Mayo, a great athlete, over to the offense. And Roper put a lot of air under that ball. This is well thrown. But there is Mayo, the defensive back who is now playing offense. They're using that athletic ability, and that's the second big catch he's had in this ball game. Good for 33 yards on that third down and six. Stewart, left side. Stewart to the 10 and out of bounds at the nine as the rain falls in Eugene. The crowd saying, Stew, Stew. He knows what it's like to play in the rain. He's from Lacey, Washington. Might have a little ice in it, too. Rain, sleep mix. He got seven on that first down carry. Ball on the eight-yard line. As Roper looks to the sidelines and adjusts the call at the line of scrimmage. This is Stewart, and Stewart hitting the backfield and pushes forward for about a half a yard. Derek Doggett and Curtis Coker with another stop. Talking about the call at the line of scrimmage, and Max Unger makes that call up there for the offensive lineman. He's the center. He released that time and he couldn't find anybody to block. He looked left, he looked right, couldn't find anybody, came back, and the only contact he had on that play was helping Stewart back up off the ground. Boy, well, he just loved to look in the eyes of players on both sides of the ball, the intensity in this tie ball game. Roper's got it. Roper's got a touchdown. in the end zone giving the Ducks their first lead of the ball game. Coach Dixon likes it on the sidelines. Evenson squeezes it in. Justin Roper. Seven plays, 67 yards, 21 unanswered points for Oregon.
again for the Beavers. 29 yard line. Moy foul. Play action. Throws and he's got a wide open receiver at midfield. Morales, Shane Morales with his first catch of the day. Good for 21. He's got plenty of time to throw too. Malvo just got very comfortable in the pocket and waited for him to clear. Now Malvo's drop here is good. Play action is not necessarily good. Doesn't freeze a whole lot of guys, but the block is terrific. And this time, rather than throwing off his heels, he just steps into it. Still throws a little bit high and a little bit behind him. But he finally stepped into the ball and moved the chains. Well, the offensive line is doing a great job. He hasn't been sacked yet. He did slip the last time they had the ball. Lost eight yards on that play, but that does not go down as a sack. Again, time to throw. He steps up and he throws another strike. Ball is out. And it's now ruled an incomplete pass. Well, Chris Johnson appeared to have the catch when he hit the ground. The ball came loose. Incomplete. Again, the ball was thrown perfectly. Chris Johnson. Looks like he has it here, bobbles it, bobbles it, and goes down to the ground. Oh, I thought he had a catch. I did too, and I think the Beaver fans do too. Right, here's the bobble. Now he's got it. Now he's got it. And now it's gone by the ground. And don't overlook the fact that Moyval's got a hot hand. He's hitting his receivers in stride now. Second and ten. He'll throw again. Plenty of time. time again. And he's got another completion. This one to Brown. Brown's out down to the 31 yard line of Oregon. Here's one of the all time best Oregon State receivers. 131 receptions coming into this ball game. And again, the offensive line gives him all the time he needs. Play action still doesn't sell a whole lot of guys. But look at the blocking out there. Moval just stands, reads, goes through his progression, throws on time. And there it is, perfectly thrown between the one and seven to Anthony Brown. Beavers have only given up 31 sacks all year. The Ducks have 35 as a defensive unit, not getting anywhere near number three. Brown in motion. Third pass in a row for Moyval. Incomplete this time. Matthew Harper had the coverage on Anthony Brown. But again, Danny had plenty of time. The blocking up front was solid. Nobody was penetrating. And Moval now really feeling comfortable in that pocket. The last two years, Oregon State has been the best Pac-10 team in the months of October, November, December. 13-3 and three in those months. So here we are now in December. Late in the ball game and they're trailing, but Moval's getting comfortable. Second and ten from the 31 yard line of Oregon. Ducks rush six. Pump fake. Moyval. Patrick Chung on the coverage flag down. Trying to get the ball to Morales. Chung says, Who, me? So that'll be 15 yards and take him down in the red zone. Pass interference on the defense, number 15. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Had his right hand in his stomach, and before he looked back, it looked like a push. Watch the bottom of your screen here now. 15 is Chung. There's the right hand, pushes him, and he turns late. There's definitely contact. Watch the right hand. There's the push. Positions himself. Yeah, that right hand is it. all you need for pass interference. Just Good ask call. Shane Morales. Good call. First and 10 for the Beavers now at the 16-yard line. Clinton Polk, the tailback. Rogers in motion. Polk's got it. And Polk almost goes down. Ball is loose. Rogers has got it. James Rogers, the man they faked the ball to, heads up by number eight. Can't believe how careless Oregon State has been with the football today. Tries to get that second effort, keeps his balance. That's when the ball comes out. And you're right, great awareness by Rogers. Rogers was about 10 yards behind him. And he sees the ball and immediately explodes to it. 
And rather than scoop it, he was smart and got down on it. And Clinton goes to the sidelines as Severson takes his spot in the tailback. Rodgers again in motion. Flag. Whistle blows. Play clock. That's the end of the quarter. And the game clock runs out. End of three in Eugene. Ducks lead by seven. Start of the fourth quarter in Eugene. 111th Civil War. Matt Severson trying to get to the outside. Trying to get that first down. He's close. He's got it at the five-yard line. And he runs hard and he cuts quickly. It's a good read. Got to the corner and turned it up and got the first. Now his quarterback. Boy, I'll make a foul. We'll get into the end zone. Gives it to Severson this time. That's a great cut on the outside. And, you know, here's a guy that came from Bend High School, Bend High Lava Bear, and was playing defense. Making the most of his opportunity today, already over 100 yards rushing. First and goal for the Bees from the five. Boy, out to the end zone. In caught and out of bounds at the one-yard line. Just short of the end zone, Shane Morales with a good catch. And Morales again, this is a spectacular catch, but more importantly, great body control to make the catch and keep a foot in bounds. Watch this. His momentum takes him that way. He's got the foot. He's being pushed from behind and still has that foot down. Great job. Great concentration. Great body control. Because, I mean, Harper is pushing him from behind as soon as he gets his hands on it. There's the push, and his feet are down. And the Beavers have the ball on the one-yard line. Andy Stewart, the fullback, number 38, in front of Severson. Severson in motion. Moivau on the rollout. Touchdown, Oregon State. First offensive point scored since 50 seconds were left in the first quarter. Last I touchdown by Oregon State was Doggett's interception return for a touchdown in the second quarter. I told you, boy, I'll make a foul to get into the end zone, and here he is. Gets a block on the corner. He's just a tough kid. He's a great leader. Naturally fast, mobile, and tough. Certainly not very big, but take him anytime you play this game. Sunset High School. Andy Stewart with that key block on the corner, Tim. Here's Cerna tying the game. Oh, this is going to be a great fourth quarter. Alexis Cerna with 140 consecutive point after touchdowns. A Pac-10 record. Congratulations. coaches a couple of mics on the sidelines Mike Riley looking to beat the Ducks for the fourth time in his seven years coaching the Beavers second and 11 fake to Severson Moival to the end zone incomplete thrown too far and it stops the clock. Gabe Miller couldn't make the catch. Miller, the redshirt freshman out of Lake Oswego, and that ball was just thrown too far. But that's a pretty good call because everybody's expecting the run there. They're positioning for the field goal. The situation was such that the defense was loading the box. So they take a shot, they take a gamble, they try to score, and end it right there. Saves Oregon a timeout. Now you do want to just position it in the very middle of the field. They come wide side right. Severson will come up short of the first down. And he took a big shot in the back. So that'll put it on the right hash mark and give him a little bit of an angle. A little pep talk from the quarterback for the senior from Fontana, California. Remember, his two misses came at the other end of the field. I'm surprised they tried to take the corner there rather than position this thing right square in the middle of that 
that field between the two hash marks. That, that is a great point, Tim, because most right footed kickers do not like kicking across their body from the right hash Absolutely mark. Absolutely not. That's why I thought pre snap they were going to run this thing just to put it in the middle of the field. They would rather be on the other hash mark if they couldn't be right in the middle because then they can aim at the far upright and draw the ball between the posts. Well, you've got 69 seconds left. OSU had a chance just to put this thing away, melt the clock, and win it. Now it comes down to this field goal, and it's pretty hefty. 35 yards of heft. Kavanaugh will place it down. Joel Cohen will snap it. 59,050 on their feet. Blocked! Blocked by Oregon. Walter Thurman blocked it. Oregon ball. Thurman, the sophomore from West Covina, California. Nine tackles, a forced fumble, an interception, and perhaps the biggest play of his career, the blocking of the Cerna field goal. Thurman was so far out on the right, he came free, untouched, and laid out perfectly. Just using that blistering speed and not afraid to take the ball in the face. A minute and one second to go for Roper. One timeout. He's going to the sidelines. Strong's got it. He's out of bounds. Take a look at how far Thurman was outside. Here he is right here, and he's coming this way and lays out perfectly. Times it. Came hard. Nobody touched him. He was running before the ball was snapped. He was so far outside, he wasn't offsides. And there was absolutely no fear of the velocity of that ball. Just laid out perfectly. Well, this isn't intramurals, brother. This is the Civil War. <laughs> First and ten for the Ducks now with 54 seconds to go. Trying to get Evenson in range. Roper over the middle. Derek Jones into Beaver territory. Gain of about six. Timeout, Oregon. Just the way a Civil War should be, huh? And the home field advantage OSU has not won on this field since 1993 and if you're wondering about the range of Matt Evenson career long 51 yards this year he hit a 47 yarder 13 of 16 field goals made and remember last year in the Civil War his kick at the end of the game never got up high enough and was blocked by the Beavers well, the visiting team in the Civil War has had a tough time winning this thing. I think you have to go back to Corvallis. The Dutch won there back in the 90s. Now, one thing, Tim, number four, Jason William, the Ducks' leading receiver, no catches today. I might be looking for number four at six foot five, 240 pounds. Crenshaw in the backfield with Roper. Williams at the top of the screen. Looking that way, and Williams has got it out of bounds. Jason Williams with a spectacular catch on the sidelines. Dan, we said at the beginning of the ball game, Stewart had to work hard and play through pain. Jason Williams had to make catches, and there he goes, using that frame that you talked about, using that 6'5 body and going up and getting the ball. He's taking a lot of heat for his drops. He had six misses last week, but that's a big time catch there. I'd go right back to him, too. On the crossing route, Roper throws it away smartly. You know, Williams has had his drop problems. He's 6'5", 240 pounds, but Chip Kelly says, I'm going to keep feeding him the ball because he gets open. He runs like a deer. Sometimes he catches like a deer. The thing that has amazed me or perplexed me is the fact that, you know, the guy makes catches that are very, very difficult. But the ones that are right at him when he's wide open, he drops. That's a great point. And that one he just made, there was a high. He had to go up and get it, pull it back down. Didn't have time to think about it. Beavers will rush four on second and ten with 30 seconds to go. Roper. And that ball's dropped. Ed Dixon. 
Did Doggett get a fingernail on that ball? Well, he certainly did block his vision. It looked like it was going to be a pick. Doggett was in great shape to make this interception. Here it is. He's playing him inside out. There's the ball. Hits his hand. Yep. Tips it. Takes it out of Dixon's view and knocks it away from him. Right now, the Ducks need about five yards to get Evenson in range, but they have no timeouts, and this is third down and ten. Again, a four-man rush. Roper will throw it away. See the difference between Roper and Moival. Roper, when he feels pressure, runs to the side instead of up into the pocket where you have all your blockers. I agree. And the other thing is, it's amazing to me that this defense gets that kind of pressure rushing just four guys. Allows other guys to drop back in coverage and make it more difficult for Roper. So Matt Evenson will come on with the field goal unit. And he's going to say, put this ball down right there. That would make it a 53 yard field goal. And Mike Riley will use a timeout to ice Matt Evenson. And that's a good timeout because the, the Beavers were a little bit confused getting guys on and off the field, and it will give him more time to think about this kick. Eric Steimer is the snapper for Oregon. Justin Roper, the starting quarterback, getting a pat on the back from head coach Mike Bellotti. He is the holder. And if I'm playing defense, knowing this is a rivalry game and there's 26 seconds left in fourth down and everything's going the way it's going today, I'm thinking watch for the fake field goal. I would also be real concerned with the long field goal and how low you have to drive the ball as a kicker. Oregon State should line up all the big tall guys right in the middle and get a hand up and try to block this field goal. Mike Riley has one timeout to use and perhaps add a little more ice. 53 yards. It's long enough. No good. no good. Just wide right. But there is a flag. A flag is down. And I think it's going to be against Oregon State. Wow. It appeared he had enough leg on this ball. It just couldn't hook in between the posts. But he may get another shot. Oh, this is a big one. 15 yards. Personal foul. What is that Mike Riley personal wants to know on the defense leaping and landing on a player by rule personal foul 15 yard first down. That's one of those calls you very rarely see everybody jumping trying to block it. But if you come down on another guy like if a linebacker comes and jumps and comes down on a lineman they're going to mark you 15 yards but you very rarely see that and now it's almost a chip shot. But again, it's on that right hash mark, Tim, we talked about. And you see with that last kick, he couldn't quite draw the ball between the uprights. This is a safety issue coming down. But the Ducks have a first and ten, so they've got a chance to go for the end zone here. No timeouts. What they're going to do is move the ball to the center of the field. And Roper does just that. Well, that's good coaching. Now they got to hustle. That is good coaching. That's what I thought OSU would have done. Well, you know, they could just take this ball, snap it, and kill it. Down to 10 seconds. They're set. They've got time. Evenson. No good. They should have lined up their offense and killed the clock. They had enough downs. You know what, Dan? You just said good coaching. And it went from great coaching to total confusion. Now, how does that happen? They couldn't get guys off the field. They couldn't line up offensively for the field goal. They didn't play the clock play, as you said, toss it into the ground. Consequently, never got set. And this is how close they came to winning the Civil War in regulation. 
Well, that's why they call it a rivalry. Legends are made on days and in games like this. You know, there's only been one overtime game in the Civil War. That was won by the Beavers in that game back in 98 that Terry Baker was telling us about. The Beavers won it 44 to 41. That's six scoreless ties in this rivalry. They're not used to 28-28. Well, one thing's for sure, we will not have a tie. We will play this one out until the cows come home. Garrett Strong, A.J. Tuatelli, Patrick Chung, Max Unger coming out for the coin toss. And that will determine the choice of offense, defense, or which end of the field. Each team gets one possession from the opponent's 25-yard line per overtime until winners decided no game clock. Play clock will run, and uh, you must go for the two-pointer starting in the third overtime. Yeah. I love these That's rules. That's the great rule. That is a great rule there. When you've got to go for two starting in the third overtime. Yeah, I'm with you. I like this. This is the way all overtime should be played. I don't like the NFL style. And most teams uh, obviously will go on defense. They know what they have to do when they get the ball on offense. Jack Foliard what to do. <laughs> so it will be Oregon ball at the 25 yard line. We've got overtime in the Civil War from Eugene. Morgan had a great chance to win it. You see 78 there running off. They had too many men on the field. Now they've got 11. Now there's confusion. Now they come back. Roper takes a knee. Now watch the ball. He doesn't turn the laces. They're scrambling, and they never got a good field goal attempt out of there. And on first down, Jonathan Stewart gets a yard. Almost spike looks like he's ball. telling yep. to spike it. Yeah. yeah. And it appeared that Evenson said, hey, come on back here. So Evenson didn't get the message on the quarterback spike, which would have killed the clock and given them time to regroup. That's where he's got to be a leader and just do what the coach told him. Here's Roper, the reverse. Derek Jones. Jones to the 20. Jones to the 10. Out of bounds at the 5. Flag down. This one's coming back. An illegal block on the outside. Garen Strong. It's going to get flagged. Had him from behind. Actually just came in and wrapped him up from behind and pushed him. Derek Jones, the uh, speedster from Long Beach Poly High School. Jones did a great job, didn't he? Getting around the corner and ducking under the tackler and turning it up. Holding on the offense number 21. A 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Garen Strong, here he is right here. Now just watch what happens at the end of this play right there. He's pushing him from behind and pushes him out of bounds. And Brandon Hughes never had a chance with uh, Strong behind him like that. Down in Tempe, the Wildcats and Sun Devils just getting underway. That was a spot of the foul penalty. It was a nine-yard gain, 10-yard penalty. So it comes back to be a second down and 10. Mike Bellotti trying to get a clarification. Here's Stewart. And Stewart in pain every step he takes. He's going to bring up another one of those long third down situations, though, for Roper. Pressure on the offensive line now. They're just 4-17 on third down conversions tonight. Roper 10 of 22. Third down and six. Four-man rush for the Beavs. Roper got Dixon. Dixon has a first down. Equipment goes flying as Dixon goes inside the 10-yard line. 
second catch of the afternoon for Ed Dixon, and it's a huge one. What a great job, too, by Roper to sit in and wait for him to clear. Comes off the right side, and he just sits over the middle. Roper was looking left, came back to the middle, and there he was. Great job and by he, Dixon. He had time to throw. Broke the tackle of Afalava and Doggett. First and goal now. Stewart, left side. And Stewart is going to get dropped for a yard loss. Well, there's no question defensively what they're doing. They're gearing up just for the run. They're gearing up for Stewart, and they're saying to the DBs, you guys cover out there because we're loading the box. Second and goal, backed up now to the 10-yard line. Here's Dixon. Stewart bouncing to the outside. Peyton's got him, and he's down for another loss. That time they only had seven guys in the box, and they came with the blitz. They brought Darlin hard. Well, Peyton, the safety, came up to finish that thing off. Loss of one, back to the 11-yard line. Third down for Roper. Over the middle, and that's Dixon, but Dixon is tackled immediately by Derek Doggett. And the field goal team will come out. Davidson is 13 of 17 on the year. This one a relative chip shot of 25 yards. Again, Justin Roper is the holder. Right hash. Perfect. Matt Severson, the tailback. First and ten. Rodgers in motion. Severson. Not much on that left side. Maybe one, maybe two yards. David Fa'atete and company on that D-line. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen. In motion comes Powers. Moyval. Incomplete. Trying to get it to his tight end. That's Howard Crooms had a big day today. Jerome Boyd had real good coverage. Third down and nine. Out of the gun goes Moival. He's got an incomplete pass over the middle. Ball thrown just a little bit low to Daryl Catchings. It appeared that Catchings, if he makes the catch, might have gone to the end zone. Boy, Val had to get rid of it. He was under a little bit of pressure. Really forced him to throw low. So, I mean, it was... It was the defense that forced this play. Now brings up a lone field goal. Brandon Bear with the pressure. 41-yard try to tie the game for Alexis Cerna. Kavanaugh to put it down. Cerna kicks it. It is good. 41 yards for Alexis Cerna. You bet. And I mean, it just squeezed in that upright. And Cerna's pumped. Tie game here in Eugene. Nothing like rivalry weekend. SC and UCLA playing Arizona, Arizona State, and the Civil War. And the 100th backyard brawl with West Virginia trying to get into the national championship game in Morgantown against Pittsburgh. So now, Oregon has the choice of which end of uncharacteristically is blowing out of the east so the kickers have that breeze at their backs Gunderson looked down the other end as they go down to that side where their fans are looked at the other end and just kind of waved them off <laughs> if boy Val can get some more offense this series now he's got three wide receivers in the game and Matt Severson as his tailback. Under center he goes. 
Rodgers in motion. Rodgers has got it. Breaks the tackle to the outside. Rodgers turns the corner. 10-5. Touchdown, James Rodgers. Tommy Osherman, Tim had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage. How about a fly sweep with the 10-3 guy? Here he is, the handoff, the timing, looking for a block, breaks the tackle, and once he gets around the corner, see you later. Great play by Rodgers. The little guy could flat out fly, and it was a good call. Just by the his, Beavers. That's just his second rushing touchdown of the year, but he is the second leading rusher for the Beavers behind the great Evanson Bernard. Here's Cerna. That's an important PAT. He's got it right down the middle. Cerna now kick it with confidence after that field goal and now the extra point. Extra point right there would have been good from 40. This is Oregon State's first lead since the score was 21-14 in the second quarter. Thanks to that man right there. Five foot six, 160 pound true freshman from Richland, Texas. That's what's great about this overtime system now. Oregon's got to score, get the extra point. And the next overtime, if they get there, will be, they'll have to go for two. So Roper goes back into the gun with Jonathan Stewart to his left side. And he gives to Stewart up the middle. And Stewart's got six yards. Joey LaRock. Tripped him up there, but Stewart looking good on that run, cutting off his left foot, not his right foot. This is the time now when you want the defense to gamble a little bit as well. That's probably why LaRock couldn't LaRock. make that tackle. You look at all that tape on his left hamstring. So second and four for the Ducks. Stewart in trouble now, and down he goes. Dorian Smith and Jeff Van Orso. Plugged up that hole quickly. Dorian Smith has played a spectacular ball game. He's just about everywhere. He never even left his feet that time and didn't go down with the tackle. Instead, just had a great big bear paw on him, held him up, and waited for help. And that's when Van Orso also took him to the ground. So third and six, Oregon has three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Roper. Four-man rush over the middle. Jason Williams has got it, but he's short of the first down by about that much. But you know it's two down territory. You have no other choice, so they will obviously go for it here on fourth down, needing just a yard. Chip, Chip Kelly face in his hand. Here's Roper. Stewart and Stewart. Didn't and get it. stop. Ball game over. The Beavers have beaten the Ducks for the first time here at Autzen Stadium since 1993. And Dan, that's where the spread attack, I think, hurts you. Just put him under center, run a quarterback sneak. But that's it. Ball game.